The Cowboys have one of the best receivers in the NFL, CeeDee Lamb. Unbelievable. The Packers do not have a top 10, top 15 receiver, you could argue. But you saw in that game, oh man, it would be nice to have a CeeDee Lamb, but it's really nice to have a lot of really good receivers, a lot of really good mm -hmm. skill players. And I, and I looked at the ESPN receiver metrics, which I really like, and Lamb was fourth, which checks out. And they didn't have, the Cowboys didn't have a single other player, receiver or tight end who finished in the top 80 outside of CeeDee Lamb. Brandon Cooks was 87th. Whereas Green Bay, Wicks was 17, Dobbs was 17, they tied. Watson was 35. Uh, even Jaden Reed finished in the top 80. And it kind of got me thinking like, ooh, like Dallas really, really suffers, I think, from not having a reliable number two. Interesting. Mina Combs believes that the Dallas Cowboys' true problem, their real issue that's been existing over the last few years, that's kept the Cowboys from being able to get over that hump, she believes that it's as simple as you don't have enough actual weapons that are available and ready to show up in the playoffs. And now we actually have a decent excuse to go back and take a closer look at some of those playoff games. I believe Mina Combs is actually on to something, but don't tell the casual fan that they believe that quarterbacks are supposed to be the end-all be-all in the playoffs. Forget about the fact that Patrick Mahomes was able to get help from a consistent and reliable run game all throughout the playoffs. Forget the fact that the defense actually showed up to work and was able to hold these explosive offenses of today's NFL in check at least to the point to where the offense could remain in striking distance and give their quarterback a chance to actually be the difference maker that quarterbacks are supposed to be. You see, ladies and gentlemen, quarterbacks are not going to be the sole driving force to winning the Super Bowl. The ideal situation is you have a quarterback that's in place that if given opportunity, if the game is within reach, if the game can be won, you have a guy that can go out there and do just that. For that to happen, you need a full team effort in the playoffs, including other weapons that can step up when the more talented and savvy defenses that you'll see in the playoffs takes one of those weapons away. Let's take a closer look at the last four or five playoff trips for the Dallas Cowboys, and let's actually see who was contributing and what were they actually contributing to the effort of winning. So Mina Kimes wanted to zone in on the wider receivers, specifically that Dak Prescott has had at his disposal, specifically in these big games when it matters the most. And it's actually quite interesting if you take a look because looking at the receivers and who's contributing and then looking at the running games and seeing how those guys are contributing the box score if you're a savvy enough football guy the box score can actually paint a pretty accurate picture as to what was going on as long as the proper context is provided the first game i want to look at is the divisional round loss against the san francisco 49ers in 2023 Cowboys lost 12 to 19, and this was a game in which the defense actually did their job. This game, the defense did a good enough job as far as holding the opposing offense in check to where the offense could remain in striking distance. Here's the thing, exactly what Mina Kime said, not only did Dak Prescott not have a second option to throw to in that game, as CeeDee Lamb was the only receiver to get even over 30 receiving yards in that game, totaling 10 receptions for 117 yards, but he didn't even get any help on the ground, as his running game only gave him 44 yards between his two starting running backs on a pretty putrid yard per carry average with less than three yards per carry. So with no running game and only one receiver that's actually out there able to make plays, you can see the lack of a secondary option, a real reliable secondary option was an issue for a team in which is driven by the passing game. You cannot possibly expect the passing game to lead you to a championship if there are not enough weapons available. Your receiving core was CD Lamb, Noah Brown, T.Y. Hilton, Kevontae Turpin, and Michael Gallup. Does that sound like a championship receiving core to you? Be honest, does that sound like a championship receiving core, especially, like I said, when you have no running game? That's the thing. Even with the Kansas City Chiefs struggles with the receiving core this year, for one, Patrick Mahomes is that dude. No one's going to take away from his greatness at all. But enough cannot be said about what Isaiah Pacheco and that Kansas City Chiefs running game was able to do 
for that Kansas City offense, and it kept the defenses honest. Defenses just couldn't start dropping back into zones and making the passing game extremely difficult because the running game was actually effective, and it had to honor the line of scrimmage because otherwise the Chiefs would have been able to just drive up and down the field by way of a consistent running attack. But you can see in this game, there was no running attack available, and there was only one receiver that really came to play on this day. Okay, let's look at the wild card game against the San Francisco 49ers from a couple of years ago. This game was actually fairly similar. Your quarterback actually outplayed the opposing team's quarterback, so you can't look at the quarterback as the sole reason as to why you lost the game. He gave the ball away one time against one of the best defenses in the league, but again, he had a game in which his running game only gave him 45 yards on the ground between the two running backs. And your leading receiver that game was Dalton Schultz with 89 yards. CeeDee Lamb had 21 yards and was only targeted five times in that game. This, ladies and gentlemen, was the final straw for Kellen Moore. Or did y'all forget that we had an offensive coordinator here that has now had two more jobs in the two years that he's been gone from the team, which is an indicator of something. And I don't know about y'all, but I remember the awful route combination. I remember the untimely play calling. I remember the lack of consistency, the lack of identity, and just the bad overall play calls that put the ball in harm's way or just wouldn't get guys open. I remember all of that. And again, what Mina Kam said, there was no real secondary help here. You didn't have a running game and your receivers were completely locked up essentially for majority of the game. All you had was a safety valve option in your tight end where you just dumping the ball out your hand so you don't get killed in that game, which is essentially what Dak had to start doing. Okay, let's look at the divisional round versus the LA Rams from a few years back. Again, going to what Mina Kimes said, Dak Prescott outplayed the opposing team quarterback in this game. Jared Goff was 15 to 28, 186 yards, had a 74.4 quarterback rating, no touchdowns, no interceptions. Dak was 20 of 32, 266 yards, one touchdown, a 99.2 quarterback rating, no turnovers in his game, ladies and gentlemen. And he actually had a rushing touchdown as well. But again, this is another game where your run game had gave you 20 attempts for 47 yards. That is less than three yards per carry. And then as if that wasn't enough, your leading receiver was Michael Gallup. Albeit this is where Michael Gallup was, he was, he was playing pretty well. But our defense couldn't stop a nosebleed in this run. This is the game where the Rams rushed for damn near 250 plus yards in this game and had complete control of the clock throughout the entire game. Another one possession game that you lose in, why? Because you don't have weapons on the field or you didn't get complimentary football play, meaning that your defense was able to get the hell off the field, not make untimely penalties, because we remember those as well. So this is now three losses that we've looked at where you can clearly see there were other issues going on on this team other than just the quarterback. And you can clearly see that what Mina Combs is saying here as far as the lack of weapons being available is an issue for the Cowboys. Hell, we can even go all the way back to Dak Prescott's first playoff game, the divisional round against the Green Bay Packers. He outplayed the great Aaron Rodgers in this game. I think a lot of people forget about that. Aaron Rodgers had a quarterback rating of 96.6. Dak was at 103.2. He threw three touchdowns in his game, one interception. Aaron Rodgers threw two touchdowns, one interception. Again, Dak outplayed Aaron Rodgers in his prime, essentially, and got a good contribution from his running game, but this was the game where your defense let you down. This is a game where you've seen the secondary receiver, and then your tight end, and then even your slot receiver come in and contribute, and the offense was in position to win until we seen what happened, the Mason Crosby kick after the Jermichael Finley catch on the sideline, and your defense let you down. So whether it be a lack of weapons, or whether it be just the team not playing winning football at the time where it matters the most, there are legitimate football reasons as to why we see the Cowboys suffer these issues during the playoffs. And if you're going to have a team that's going to be led by your offense, that's going to be led by your passing attack, you better make sure that your quarterback has plenty of weapons available that can make plays in one-on-one situations. 
Brandon Cooks, he was cool this year, in my opinion. I mean, this was his first year in a new offense, first year with a brand new quarterback. The quarterback learned a new offense. I don't think that while you're trying to get on track with your number one receiver, it's going to be realistic to expect any quarterback to just instantly hit the ground running with all three receivers, your, your X, your Y, and your slot. There's no way that that's going to happen in that type of situation. But... We are going into year two of this offense. Brandon Cooks should have a little bit of a better rapport with Dak Prescott. And now we need to start seeing more from guys like Jalen Tobert, Jalen Brooks, Ryan Flanoy. We need to start seeing more from these guys now because now those guys are going to have to become our version of Romeo Dubes and those other Green Bay Packer receivers. They were not highly touted guys, but they ended up being developed in that system and becoming good football players with good play calling that allowed them to get open and put them in position to make plays. At this point, it's about seeing is this offense going to be crafted in the way to where it puts their players in positions to make plays. Are we going to see Kevontae Turpin get used more? Are we going to see Brandon Cooks be used more consistently and be used running actual routes that he's comfortable running act like he's been doing throughout his career? Because Brandon Cooks was not being used properly last season. He was not being used the way he should have been used last season. And him and Dak were not connecting on a lot of those deep shots that they were taking. I expect some of those deep shots to actually connect a little bit more this season. And is the running game, is the running game, is the offensive line, is that going to allow you to have a balanced attack on offense and not just have to push all your chips into the passing game? Because to be quite frank, we just haven't seen many teams win when that's the case. Even if you go back to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with Tom Brady when he won the Super Bowl there, they had a viable running game. They had dudes that could get them a first down, that could control the field a little bit when they needed them to. It wasn't going to carry the team by any means, but the running game could not just completely be ignored like ours could last season, essentially, right? But either way, that's my thoughts on this whole thing. Let me know yours down in the comments below. I'll see you guys on the next one. We still the same old Cowboys. Calling me, texting me, paging me, asking me, am I still the ball? Y'all use the check on me. Listen, 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 listen. I'm still them boys. Hey! Woo! Oh, shut up, my boy. Hey! I'm still them boys.